I thought we could start from the very beginning. Like, where did the idea for Dominum come from? So it was um, during a production. So I'm a I'm a record producer basically, and I've had a a band in the studio um, who are pirates basically, and uh, it was during uh, during one of the COVID lockdowns where we were just allowed to to work and not meet anyone on a regular basis, you know, and so we. We're in our little cabins, and I was thinking about right. So there are now pirates. There are several Vikings. There are musketeers. But why are there no zombies? Because I'm a zombie fan since I'm 12 years old, and I've I kind of thought it's it's obvious. Like if there are so many gimmicky bands from werewolves to Vikings, why are there no zombies? And so I thought, all right, let's do it. Okay, if it started already during the pandemic, how did the whole thing get rolling? Well, uh, it was kind of a process, to be honest, because um, it's different. It's different uh, when you form a band in your thirties than when you do it like with thirteen, let's say. Because with thirteen, you basically meet up with your friends. You go to uh, some basement or whatever, a rehearsal room. You have like a, a box of beer, and then you go right. But um, with when you're like 30 and you and your friends and your bandmates probably already have some kind of life uh things are a bit different right so um we we tried out many different things we tried out like singing in german for example was dominant was first in german and um it didn't feel right you know the the thing is with a band and this is what i always uh, see when bands are here in the studio it gets right when it feels right, anything else you can you can let uh, I don't know um, Attila from Powell sing a I'm on a math song, but that's not his thing. You know, it might work, of course, but it's not his thing. So, I think when when bird, when bands work really well, it's because it's 100 percent authentic. So um, we kind of had to find our way and our style and unique style. Didn't pay too much attention on on what genre we play it was like figuring out and like just trusting our guts but in the end uh after a quite a long time to be honest we've had this record here uh that we were all happy with and here we are you know we can say zombie metal or power metal but how would you describe the music in your own words i mean as i said we didn't pay too much attention on what genre we're in because again we wanted to be free and like guts metal, let's say. <laughs> but um, I think it's a it's a, a mixture of uh, of of power metal with also some symphonic influences, maybe, but also with uh, like Anthony um, hooks and, and choruses and very very melody based. I would say um, uh, it's it's not a it's not a super guitar driven band i would say it's more about the melodies and um yeah queen queen meets sabaton maybe that would be a, a description in my own words so you said it uh, took a while so how did these 11 songs uh, end up in hey living people album like how was the recording and writing process as i have a studio myself i kind of can skip the process of pre-production so when i record something i try to record it as or arrange it as final as possible of course um when tommy plays the guitars it sounds way better than when i play the guitars but this whole process of all right we're going to do a very shit version of a song or very basic version of a song and then re-record everything and re-record all the synths and everything that didn't happen. So I can sing always. I can always sing. So I kind of kind of did all the choirs in the meantime. And meanwhile, and and also, so I think the the sound was formed a bit because it's it's very driven by by the vocals. I would say. And when you like sit around in the studio and, and fiddle around with it, some kind of uh, style um, came to life, if if you can say that. And that was a very fun process. But even though you know. Um, when you produce an album by yourself, it's a very um, it's a devastating process because you are not 
as fast and not as confident as 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 I usually am when like working with bands because I I I'm basically a fresh pair of ears that uh, that can listen to music and when I write and also arrange the music I'm not fresh at all I'm super used actually and I I have the songs in my head all the time and then I have to gain some distance from it to be able to uh to to see is it working is it really working or am i just used to the things so this took really this took a while and it was a very sometimes frustrating process but in the end when um when you get a final song and you listen to it and you i I, especially when listening with other people like with my girlfriend for example i play a song to her it's a different hearing already like when you listen for yourself, you already know what's coming. But if there's someone is sitting next to you, you kind of already figure out where's where where's need what work to be done, where what parts are maybe too long, which melody is not working. So yeah, that was the, the process. Yeah, we have mentioned the zombie team. So uh, is there like a well, horror storyline on Hey Living People, or what are these uh, 11 songs about? Um, no. So we have um, a few stories here and there, of course, like uh, also told in the video about Patient Zero that was born and that came to life. And it's finally the first zombie that doesn't want to kill Dr. Dead, who um, instead of uh, killing him, he obeys him. So that's that's a very good thing. And there's also a story about how Dr. Dead tries his first zombie out uh, in the city. Um, but basically, this album is what it says on the title. It's a, um, a new band is born. It's a statement. Hey, living people, get ready. The zombies are coming, but don't panic. The good zombies, the metal zombies. Everything will be fine. Calm down. We all know that you... You know uh, the character of Doctor Death. So, like, who is Doctor Death in the end? Of course, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to have the scar. Um, that uh, obviously, Doctor Death is bald, and <laughs> but uh, where he really came to life was during the first video shot because this is where we were all first time in costume. Everyone was having the mask on everyone was like wearing all props and everything and but then when the lights turn on and the spotlight turns on and the camera is is pointed at you i mean we're all not actors you know it's it's more we're doing like like we feel and of i mean i i sometimes get asked how much felix is in dr dead i i don't know to be honest i mean um it was really a thing that was created in that moment of that a video and that was a very magical thing i i didn't have t- proper time to prepare i didn't go to acting school or whatever it was like let's let it happen and see if it works and hopefully it works and it did kind of work so everyone was happy in the end so i hope it's it's fine continuing on that what kind of experience do you want to deliver to audiences uh, when playing live so um this is going to be an experience with all senses which I think is really important. I mean, it's a zombie metal band. So obviously the visual aspect is as important as the music. Um, And of course you can do lots of crazy stuff when you have a few zombies on stage and maybe also in the audience, who knows? And of course, like in every good zombie movie, you have like an unexpected twist that can happen. Um, And also like this, it's going to be at our live shows and, um, yeah, but it's going to be a show mainly entertaining because there is um, so much stuff going on right now in this world. You know, there is plenty of wars going on. When you scroll through the internet, you you, you don't know what's even real because everything could be written by an artificial in- intelligence or c- even videos. Deep fakes can be, you know, they're so good right now. But what they can't take away from us is our life experience. That when, if you're in a room when you're in a room with a thousand sweating people and you are sweating with them and uh, raising your fists in the air and go metal. This is like the most true thing you can get. And this is where our focus is. We want to entertain and have uh, the people have a good time. This is our goal. 
Well, we are talking about zombie metal, so uh, I feel like I have to ask. So, what are your favorite zombie movies? <laughs> of course, you have to. <laughs> so, um, when I was twelve, and please don't tell that to my mom. When I was twelve, I was watching the first zombie movie ever, and this is. Uh, I haven't seen a, a zombie movie that is better than this one. It's Dawn of the Dead. It's a classic, of course, and with the soundtrack of Disturbed, it's you know for us metal people. Uh, it's even more engaging, but this is like to me the perfect zombie movie. It's a classic with the shopping mall, with perfect zombies. They are not too slow, they are not too fast. I'm I'm watching right now um Black Summer on Netflix, where the zombies are super fast, which I'm cool with. But for example, my girlfriend, she's super annoyed by it. She's no, they're too fast. Come on, it's it's a different thing. Um, but of course, I also really like uh the last of us was really fascinating to me and also of course walking dead is a classic that i've seen a few times um yeah but i think the the movie that i'll always be able to watch without getting annoyed is dawn of the dead so we're talking about the future of dominum how do you feel is this like a one album project or what kind of plans do you have for the band i mean this is also a thing um when you form a band when you're 30 you kind of have to think about it quite uh quite uh, well because it really matters what you do right now see <laughs> because we're getting older and what what do you want to do with your life and i as a producer i had to decide where do i want to put the focus on and as I did this album, it was so much fun. Also, the the, the guys in the band, we all having so much fun on stage. We, we played a couple of shows already. We have so much fun on stage. It's just, it's our thing. And this will this will not be a, a one album project for sure. Not this is now dedication for life, I would say. I'm already like in the second, I'm working on the second record already. So this definitely is not going to be a one album project. Please welcome 